Welcome back to the channel guys, it is result time for the 5800X3D. So I did something a little bit different because there's been quite a few reviews on the 5800X3D all with different merit, but I wanted to see firstly if this is going to be an easy upgrade for someone on a lower end PC. I put that in inverted commas because that is obviously subjective. Now how I did this was I had two specific builds. In the first build, I had a B450 with a 3060 as well as 16 gigs of DDR4, CR19 RAM set at 3600 megahertz. The second build was actually my personal build, which you can see up there, and that is a X570 with a 3090 Ti. It has 32 gigs of DDR4 and that is set at 4000 megahertz on CL19. Yes, for all the people in the back going, hiss. It is not the optimal RAM for this chipset. That would actually be 3600 on CL14. It's just the RAM that I have to use, but it won't alter the results too much. Now, just three points of note before we begin. Firstly, this is a gaming CPU, as mentioned in my first video, so nothing here is gonna be benchmarked against, okay, it's not as powerful as a 5900X. The 5800X 3D was pushed towards gaming. Secondly, for the test, both had 360 degree AOs for cooling. And lastly, the Windows profiles were set to performance mode, and this is because Ryzen uses Windows performance mode to derive its performance. And just a little point of interest for those who might not know, it is extremely important to update your BIOS. So obviously the BIOSes were updated. Now just to show you what an impact this can have, before on this PC on my left, on the X570, this is the results that I had on Cinebench before the BIOS update, and this is the result that I had after the BIOS update. But it is time to jump in to the results. Starting off with the performance, and obviously starting with a Cinebench R23, so going from left to right, we're going to have the 5800Xs first. So I do have the result from the CPU Monkey being 15228. Then on the B450, we have 14801. And then on the X570, 15102. So kind of getting there. Normally hit CPU Monkey or just over, but again with bloatware, an issue. Now with the X3D, obviously we do have a lower result. It has a lower frequency, but a 15,003 on CPU Monkey. Then on the B450, a 13,407, which is quite a significant drop. And on the X570, a 14,201, also a significant drop. On a single core performance, CPU Monkey on the 5800X hitting 1619 on the B450, 1525, on the X570, 1586. Then on single core performance on the X3D, CPU Monkey, 1491. On the B450, notably lower on a 1393, and on the X570, 1471. Now let's talk about the power draw. The X3D was actually drawing in a lower wattage at 125 watts. This is gonna be important when we go to the temperatures. On the X570, on the 5800X, drawing 146 watts. Cinebench max frequencies on the X3D hitting 4473 on the X3D and a average of 4209 on the X3D. On the 5800X, on the X570, a max of 4831 and a average of 4324. So hitting the maximum reported CPU frequencies of the CPUs. Now getting on to the temperatures. On Cinebench, the X570 on the X3D first up on the far left, hitting a max of 90 and an average of 86, which is okay for Cinebench, especially because this does push your CPU to the max. On the 5800X, it did hit a 90 as well as a max, but an average slightly higher of 87. Now on ADA stress tests, the X3D coming in at a maximum of 82 and an average of 77. And on the 5800X, a max of 89, notably higher there, and a average of 80. On a power draw for the B450 on the X3D, 127 as normal, and then on the 5800X, 145. 
The frequencies, again, pretty much doing what they meant to on the X3D 4450 as a max on the X3D 4296 on the average. On the 5800X, 14 on the 5800X, 4850 as a max and 4637 as an average. Now the temperatures here are very interesting. Generally when I do tests, I do four to five tests and I take the average of four to five tests. And I actually probably did around 10 or 20 tests on this because I just failed to believe. Now I'll post which AIO I was using because I think it might've been AIO dependent, but as we can see on Cinebench hitting a max of 78 and an average of 74 on the B450 on the 5800X, a 68 is a max and a 66 is an average. Then on the stress test, the 5800X3D again higher, 61 with an average of 60. And on the 5800X, a max of 58 with a average of 57. Moving on to the interesting bits, which is actual game performance. Now I did this on the B450 as well as the X570, which you'll see just now. And I did this in 1080, 1440 and 2160. I'm only gonna be speaking about the average because that is the most important result. Now the 3D will be on top and the X right below on the different resolutions for all the tests. So looking at the 3D's average on Rainbow Six Siege on Ultra, 376 to 362. So slight advantage there for the 3D, but not massive. Looking at 1440, 258 to 256. So again, very negligible. And then on 4K, 135 to 136, even less differentiation actually favoring the X on 4K. Rainbow Six Siege Ultra on the X570 noted more differentiating results. On the 3D, we had an average of 631 versus the 532 of the 5800X. So now we can start to see a definite gap between the performance. On 1440, slightly less on 516 versus 478, and then a lot less on a 4K of 323 to 321. Assassin's Creed Ragnarok on Ultra on the B450, average on the 3D of 95 versus the X of a perfect 95. Then moving on to 1440, 79, 79, and then on 4K, surprisingly, a 58 to a 57, but again, these were very, very slight differences, and they were pretty much just points being rounded up. On the X570, we have an average of 120 versus a 117, so slight advantage there to the 3D. Moving down to 1440, 102 to 98, again, very negligible. And moving on to 4K, 68 to 66, even less. F1 2021 on Ultra with the B450 3060 combination, we have an average of 111 to 111 on 1080. 1440, 81 to 81, and then on the 2160 or 4K resolution, 45 to 45. F1, same settings on Ultra on the X570 3090 Ti combination, 248 to 216, so a nice performance differentiation on average FPS. On the scale of 1440, 201 to 193, so the results are starting to become less favorable, and 141 to 130 on 4K. Far Cry 6 on Ultra on the B450, 108 to 102, so not really that much in it yet again. Moving on to 1440, 81 to 80, nothing in it. And then on to 4K, 46 to a perfect 46, absolutely nothing in the results there. Now, this was where I saw the most differentiation in results. The average on Far Cry 6 Ultra on the X570 3090, 157 on the 3D versus the X of 117. So nice big difference over there. On 3D on the 1440, we hit 137 versus 119 on the X or 5800X. And then on 4K, we hit 94 to 90. So this being where we saw the maximum results. It is time to conclude, and I think the obvious conclusion, like most CPUs, the 5800X3D's performance is derived from the surrounding components. 
I do think it's a little bit more extreme in the X3D's case because of a V cache. So I didn't have the time to be able to do multiple setups and multiple testing, but I don't think VRMs did come into play on the motherboard side. It did come in slightly because we saw differentiating results on Cinebench from the X570 to the B450. But where the results did come in is honestly on the bottleneck on the graphics card. So if you do want to make use of this, it does need to have a beefier graphics card in a 3080 or 6800 XT in my opinion. So what is the conclusion? So many reviewers have been scared to go and say, yes, this is a recommend buy. And I stand by them to a certain extent. And the reason is because you do need to have the complementing components to be able to say that you can utilize the full capacity of Vcash. Secondly, next gen is around the corner. So part of me wants to say, yes, wait, hold on, wait and see what that's going to do. And the third part, and most importantly for me, is that we've seen with the X3D that it is extremely game dependent on where it can derive extra performance. There's a saying that my parents taught me and that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Now, what that means is that you should cover what you have versus what is potentially out there. Because just like cell phones, there's always going to be one that comes out next year. And do I mean that 7000 series is not worth waiting for? No. Do I mean that 7000 series is going to be worse performance than the 5800X3D? No, not at all. I think it's probably going to be phenomenally better. However, if we keep on chasing, we're never going to be satisfied. So here's my recommendation. If you do have the components that can complement the X3D and you've seen a game where the performance is quite better, not just marginally in like 20, 30, 40% better, and you want to get that performance, go for it. When you're only having to upgrade your CPU with next gen, it's DDR5, there's a whole bunch of changes, you're gonna to have to get a new motherboard, new power supply, it's PCIe 5, so that is gonna be quite a cost versus just upgrading your CPU if that does make sense. Now, there's a really great video to watch, and that is Hardware Unbox. Now, Hardware Unbox tested 41 different games. They did a phenomenal job in testing the X3D. And in one of those tests, like a Seto Corso, for you racing some guys out there, is that it performed 50% better. The frames were 50% higher than it was on the 5800X. Now, something that hasn't been picked up and it was picked up by Hardware Unbox is that the 1% lows are a lot better or a lot more stable. So yes, you're gonna get a higher average frame rate, but your 1% lows are gonna ensure that you get a lot more of a stable performance. And I'll put the video link in the description below. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your comments in the section below. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to drop one if you want to and enjoy the content. Cheers for now, goodbye.